It is time that we bring on one of our good friends. He is a member of the Countdown to Tip-Off crew, or I should say BYU Sports Station game day crew. All-time leading scorer in BYU basketball history, Tyler Hawes is with us on BYU Sports Nation. And uh, Ty, we were just talking about where we think this BYU team is going to finish in the West Coast Conference. Right now, they're fifth. We're at the halfway point of the WCC season. I feel like this team has shown us who they are. We should believe them. And why, why would we think that they will finish any higher than fifth right now? How would you answer that question? Yeah, I mean, right now, I, I think fifth is, is, I mean, hopefully they can finish fifth. Uh, it was a pretty dark couple of days. Uh, I mean, some of the darkest of the season, I, I would say. Just a tough road trip, um, not competitive. I mean, tough on both ends of the floor. Uh, there's some broken pieces right now. And I mean, this is a competitive league this year. And for them to finish in the top five, I mean, they're going to really have to turn some things around and, and strap it on. And uh, but it's it's a long way to go. Mark Pope on the postgame show on BYU Radio certainly owned the loss, saying this was on him. They should never, ever, ever, ever use six evers, uh, you know, have a game like that. How much uh, of this is on Mark Pope and the coaching staff versus ownership for the players? Well, I, I mean, Coach Pope is, is always going to be the first one to, you know, self-deprecate and uh, take the blame, take the ownership. But it's not just all on him. I mean, watching those games, these guys were not ready to play in both of those games. I mean, it got down, I think, 28 to I mean, got down big early in both of those games, uh, down 10 plus points in both games and just not ready to go and let guys, Shabazz goes for 30, Tyrell Roberts goes for 20. I mean, just letting guys uh, get going and get hot. And I mean, they knew coming into that San Francisco game that these guys wanted to shoot threes and just, I don't know, super disappointing that guys didn't lock in and it, it felt like every time those teams made a run, uh, they didn't bounce back and uh, turnovers were again a, a big issue. Uh, but, you know, one thing Coach Pope said was our hearts are not right and, and that's on me. And I think, you know, some of that is coaching. Like, uh, that that's always, uh, you know, you got to take the temperature of the team as far as where your where your hearts are. And it's obviously not right. Guys are not playing hard. They're not, they're not locked into what's going on. And when they get punched, they're not responding. And so those are all big issues that, that need to be addressed and need to be fixed. And, um, but I don't think it's all on coaches either. I mean, I remember moments in, in my career where, you know, coaches are, you know, bringing the fire every day to practice and, yeah, you know, when you get in these dark spots, it can be very, very intense and uh, ultra competitive in practice. You know, almost going back to preseason practices where guys are like it's a bloodbath in practice. No fouls are called. Like I expect that to be happening this week. Um, but hopefully, there's some guys on this team that rally internally. You know, outside of what the coaches are saying and care enough about the program and, and what's going on to to rally these guys and be like, we've got to fix this. This is, you know, we got to, the, the players are the most important part. And uh, there's got to be some leadership uh, that, and guys that step up uh, internally and, you know, have, have, have whatever meeting and talks that need to happen so that, you know, everything outside a game plan, like, your heart and your focus and your fight, th those things have to be a given every night, and, and they just weren't over the weekend. Tyler Haas with us on BYU Sports Nation. Is it a good thing to have a week between games at this point, to sit on the two losses in a row knowing that St. Mary's is coming in on Saturday? Uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm putting myself in the shoes of the players, and I know what they're walking into this week, and – for, you know, from their perspective, this is going to be probably their worst week of practice uh, for sure. You know, my my sophomore year, I can remember we lost in the first round of uh, the West Coast Conference Tournament. Didn't know if we were going to play postseason. We had about seven or eight days in between games. 
And it was, I mean, you're tired, you're beat up. And we had crazy practices that were ultra competitive and fighting. And, you know, coaches are trying to light a fire inside you. And um, no, well, I mean, we'll just have to have to see how, how they respond. But hopefully this is a good constructive week uh, where they can right the ship and have the meetings that they need to off the court uh, and uh, and get right. It, it could be a good week. And, you know, we th this team's so interesting because I feel like they ride the wave of who they're playing. And, it, I mean, they, they had Gonzaga beat, had him on the ropes and let that one slip away. And so... Uh, I could see BYU coming in and, and fighting and, and being in the game, right, in the last seven or eight minutes against the Gales. And hopefully that's the case. And uh, I know I know Cougar Nation and the Rock's going to show up and be there to support. But, I mean, I'm most concerned about the fight and uh, just the feel of those games was was not there. It's tough to only uh, lead for about four minutes on Thursday, didn't lead at all on Saturday. I want to ask you this. Is it time to perhaps shake up the lineup a little bit uh, regarding the starters and perhaps, especially after last week, put Rudy Williams in the starting lineup, or would you keep it the same? You know, maybe. Maybe you shake it up. Uh, after last week and, and the starts that they had in both of those games, um, maybe you do shake it up. And maybe it's a good thing to, you know, write the minds of, of this team and this group um, and some of the young guys. Like, the first, the first four to eight minutes of any game sets the tone for everything. And, and if you don't bring the fight and throw the first punch, then you're, you're climbing out of a hole the whole game. And it, those are just hard things, to, hard things to face. And, you know, Rudy, Rudy brought it in both games. He, he was one of the only dudes scoring. And so I, I could see them switching the lineup up and, and bringing him in. Um, but, you know, if you're not ready to play, then, you know, those guys are going to get less and less minutes. And so uh, I, I expect... I expect some sort of change this week, and, and Rudy might be a, a, a good starting point for that. Tyler, BYU is 4-4 four and four through the first half of WCC play. To go 9-7 and seven and finish with a winning record, they got to go 5-3 and three in the back eight, but that includes two games against St. Mary's, one against Gonzaga, and you got to host Santa Clara, and you still got to go on the road to Pepperdine. I know they don't have a win in conference, but... Firestone Fieldhouse has been a weird place for BYU to play. Is it too much to expect this BYU team to go 5-3 and three and finish with a winning record in conference? Uh, it, it is a tall ask uh, at this point. But, hey, I'm, I'm optimistic, and I've seen bright moments uh, of this team and this year and what they're capable of. And so, I mean, you have, you have a number of home games there, uh, and, and if you can – find a way to take care of business at home and, and you could, you know, steal one against St. Mary's or Gonzaga, which I don't, I don't know we'll ha if that'll happen. Uh, but win the games that you're supposed to, um, I, I could see that happening, Spence. Uh, five and three on the back end. Uh, it's not it's not out of the realm of possibilities, but, you know, considering where the team is at right now, uh, they've got an uphill battle to climb and uh, it, it just gets harder and harder uh, throughout a season because you're getting more and more fatigued. You got more bumps and bruises. And, uh, you know, when, when you lose two in a row uh, or, or yeah, three, you know, three in a row, it, it, it's just, it gets tough and mentally it's challenging. And so uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm concerned. I, I hope uh, the leadership on this team steps up and, and that they can have a good uh, second half to uh, the conference play. Two and four in the last six. Not great, but luckily BYU has just a real easy game coming up Saturday against the nation's number 22 team in the AP poll <laughs> and number six in net, St. Mary's. Any long-term concern with sort of how this season is going uh, good enough season last year, making the NIT, making a run. Next year in the Big 12, hopefully BYU's better, but 
But if not, that's tough. And then that next year, it's year two. Hopefully you adapt. Any long-term concern as BYU heads into the toughest experience of its basketball life next year? But also the biggest opportunity. Yeah. Um, you know, I I don't know. It, it, it'll be interesting to see how BYU finishes this year. Uh, if they continue to trend downward, then, yeah, I'm very concerned. Uh about uh, just this group and what changes need to be made. Now, I, I don't think that will happen. I think, uh, you know, guys like Spencer Johnson and Rudy Williams and, and he, I mean, even young guys like, like Foose who have been, been through a season, like I expect them to, to turn this thing around and so that they, they learn the lessons they need to to avoid those long-term effects, right? Um, you know, you can't get you can't get used to and comfortable just uh, not competing and not fighting. And, you know, it's it's not OK to lose games. Um, but, you know, as we've seen, uh, it is really hard to win a Division One basketball game, no matter what conference you're in. Uh, it, it could be any guy's night. And, and most nights, guys are gunning for BYU. And uh, you know, Tyrell Roberts is the perfect example. I mean, comes in and, and shoots lights out. Uh, and, and Shabazz, we've had such a hard time guarding Shabazz. But you, I, as far as going back to, I'm getting off on a tangent, but as far as long-term effects, uh, I hope this group can learn the lessons they need to uh, and, and continue to grow. Because they've had some... They've had some tough lessons this year, uh, and they're learning how to how to win, uh, especially down the stretch in, the, in those last six to eight minutes. And uh, you're headed into a, a monster year next year, and you gotta you you gotta learn the lessons you need to to uh, to be ready for that. Tyler Haas with us on BYU Sports Station. Always insightful. He knows how to score the basketball as well. Tyler, thanks for the time, man. Hey, thanks for having me on, guys.